That's Arthi. That's Noor. And you're listening to The Reality Is. Hi, guys. We are super duper excited to talk today about all the things that have been going on in the last week. It has been a content rich week, but we've got a lot to cover today. We're super excited because it's, as usual, myself, Noor, and I'm with Arthi. Arthi, hi. Hi, Noor. And I was watching TV for Kornacki. I was so worried for him. Oh, I, God. I, that, yeah. I was just watching Steve Kornacki. Steve Korsnacki, as I like to call him. And, <laughs> and, and we are super excited because we're joined today with a fantastic guest, Mani from Mixing with Mani. If you guys are listening to this, it's because you probably, um, we said somewhere on the internet that we're recording with Mani and then you follow <laughs> Mani and then Mani led you to us. So you guys, she needs no introduction, but she's fantastic. And she's truly one of like, there's a lot of opinions about Bravo from a lot of white girls. And you know what? <laughs> it's a breath of fresh air to have the perspective of a person of color. So Mani, we're so super duper excited to have you on today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So we're going to jump right into real life news. Hey, did anything exciting happen, Arthi? My big sister, Kamala Harris, just was <laughs> uh, nominated and then got all the words to be the vice president elect. Yes, super exciting. So we were just talking right before I hit record and Money said something really great, which is Kamala Harris literally checks off all the boxes within the people on this podcast right now. Yep, yeah, she cleared the bingo card. Like she is the first everything. I mean, I think this is a big win for literally every minority group ever. Um, she's the first black VP, the first um south uh, asian vp the first black uh college graduate vp the first woman vp like she is the first of everything, everything yeah uh, wow way to carry the world on your back <laughs> yeah it was great and yeah i guess joe biden's there too yeah right <laughs> <laughs> another white um, man it's fine yeah, it's fine. fine it's fine it's fine you know yeah. it's it's been a relief i've been enjoying it i know that there's a lot of unrest there's some madness happening right now. We got people who want to not count, count, don't know math. But um, I'm going to try to focus on staying hopeful because it's not stupid to hope. So I'm going to hold on to it. And I'm going to just hope that January comes and things get like a little, little bit it's, better. It's already getting better. We have Salt Lake City Housewives. Yes. But it's already better. See you later, Beverly Hills. Yeah. Okay. I don't ever need to see Beverly Hills on my TV <laughs> again. Unless they do like, well, I say that. I say it. But I don't know if I mean that because Erica is also getting a divorce. So who knows? Maybe I do want to. Way to secure that. her diamond. I mean, that's all I can <laughs> think. I mean, there was so much talk of her getting dethroned, uh, demoted to friend of. And I think that is quintessentially not happening now. Like there's no way that they will allow that to happen as she is getting a divorce. Um, the fact that it's all moving so quickly that it happened during election that they were filming during election. Oh my gosh, she is going to stay. She's a staple now for at least two seasons. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because that divorce is not going to happen over one season. I mean, that is going to no, go No, and then they're going to want to follow on. her about what and happened she, after. How does she live her life after Tom when she's by herself? Right. Oh and she God. didn't She didn't have a prenup either, right? So this is going to not have a drag prenup. Off. She did not have a prenup. She famously said, you know, even if she did have one, she's married to one of the most powerful lawyers um, in the country uh, historically. So he would have just basically ripped it to shreds in every kind of way. But she is asking for some major dollars. So uh, shout out to her because it's getting messy now. Well, what I want to know is like, is Tom going to bring in the entire Glam Scott squad and like how much it costs him to maintain that over all these years? Because he could definitely be like, like, you I, owe me a little bit. For I actually thought that 7000 a month was actually, this sounds ridiculous because this would never happen for any regular person who is like listening. But yeah, it's that seemed reasonable for, yes. for her for what she said that it costs like it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. for her to pr produce herself and be erica jane and she's used his money largely for so many of her performances and stuff so for her to only ask for seven thousand dollars a month in spousal support which is pretty much only like 84 grand a year it's so under 100 grand that's not even enough for one 
hairstylist to stay on payroll the whole year. Yeah, that's not even enough for Mikey. Does this Mikey make it's less not. than Mikey? That's, yeah, that, he yeah, probably makes that's... about that. So who, right. who else is she going to get rid of? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, I feel like I, I, I very, very much uh, don't love OC, but I've watched a little bit of it. And we list, I listen to a lot of recaps of OC, so I kind of know what's going on there. But didn't Shannon like complain that she was only getting $10,000 a month from her ex-husband, David? So it's like, if Shannon fucking Bedore is asking for more than $10,000 a month, then it feels even like Erica asking for 7000 is pretty low. <laughs> I'm saying all this, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't well, know how I mean, rich people is, function. It's in, it's in spousal, <laughs> so I guess that makes sense because Erica doesn't have any kids with Tom. Oh, true. And her You're right. Grown, yeah. So with a job, her kid's a cop. So yeah, it feels Ooh. much like this is really, truly spousal. But I honestly think that's also kind of fair because she had to have the switch for so many years being married to him where she was Mrs. Girardi. She deserves mm-hmm. to me a little bit of luxury in that because she, you know, she was this powerful attorney's wife. She hosted the dinner. She did the golf course thing, the country club thing. She was that girl for many, many, many years, decades. So I think it's okay to ask for a little bit of change from this yeah. man who had her doing this. I mean, clearly her love is being a showgirl and he's never stifled that, but he also, if during the daytime, he's like, I need you to be conservative, you know, attorney wife she deserves a little bit of like, okay, well, I put this on hold for very many years and I'm just becoming a showgirl in my forties. I deserve a little extra change. Yeah. 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 And then I'm excited about Erica. I, I hope that Erica actually opens up now because it almost felt a little bit like she didn't talk about a lot of her personal stuff because she was tied to this like big time lawyer. So now that that's gone, I, she better fucking open up. Cause like, come on, Erica, it's about time. I, th- I think if you strip, if you strip her Erica Jane persona, all you'll, you'll be left with will be a Teddy Mellon cap. She, I don't think she's very interesting. Wow. That yeah. is, a those statement. are bold. That is a bold statement. <laughs> <laughs> those are strong words. All right. So um, so Mani, you were recently made very TV famous. Okay. <laughs> you were you were sipping tea at, in a real Housewives of Potomac episode. I mean, how perfect. It's like, you know, divine intervention that you were literally sipping tea during this like very juicy episode. So <laughs> um, so you went to this live podcast, the live podcast that supposedly cost two hundred thousand dollars to produce. Oh, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. I just don't know how because we all pay for our own food. So I don't really understand how. Because it was at a restaurant that has sadly since closed down because of COVID. Um, And I mean, my mom only booked the tickets because she just left brunch there like like three days before. And she just (laughs) left dinner there like a happy hour there. It was a jazz concert like three days before. And she was like, everyone said, I got to go to brunch, but they have this thing. And it said housewives. So I figured you might like it, but I want to go to brunch. <laughs> and oh my so God. She was like, do you know these people? And I was like, wait, mom, this is a big deal. What are you talking about? And it was a dream come true to be able to go. We pull up and it's like, um, hi, are y'all here for the live podcast? You have to sign this waiver to be on camera. And I'm like, I will sign everything. Like, get my entire information. Y'all want my cell phone number? What you want? You want my blood type, my social security? What do you need? You want a license? Uh, you can run it. Um, do whatever you gotta do, but you will be putting me on that camera. Um, and I mean, every time I saw a camera poised onto a shoulder, I was like, sit up straight. And smile, and smile, and it, it's so crazy because the two they basically showed two and a half minutes of that entire day, and it was four and a half hours long. They shot oh so much B roll, I can't believe none of it made. But, but wait, you paid how much per ticket? Um, I want to say they were like probably like 50 60 bucks a person, yeah. But and then they you you had to pay for the food on top of that. I thought that was what was costing her the money is that she was. No, Mm -mm. and see, that's usually like usually when you go to a live podcast, it's like in seats, right? Because and you can get sessions and stuff, but it's usually not that expensive because it's just you sitting and like watching. Like it's not really doing anything. Um, you can get like a couple drinks or something, but no, it was um 
full brunch and there was a brunch menu. I don't remember if it was specific to the day or not. Um, and I think that was probably towards the cost of like the minimum uh, for her to book the, the venue. That's what I think. Is so really, but even the minimum for the venue, the venue was going to make money off of the people eating food. Sure was. It sure did. So what? I, I, the venue made $200,000 off of her and plus from all of the people that had come there. I think she like means that she had to close down. And then they closed down. Where did the money go? <laughs> <laughs> I think she means she spent 200000 on the podcast altogether, like over the last couple of years, not just yeah. that one event. Because she threw yeah. more than one event and she got office space for what reason we don't know. And Wild. Um, she has, she books well, a she's- studio in Rockville. Um, so she has that studio time. So she's like, I think overall to produce this one podcast, it costs this much, which still doesn't make sense because I started mine for free because I don't have it. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, same, same. So it's just so crazy. But also, you know, she does the flyers. <laughs> she prints the flyers for yeah. a digital content. Those it's amazing. Thousands, hundreds of thousands following on social media. You print out the flyers. <laughs> It's so crazy. It's so crazy. These people but, will make a difference. Oh my God. So the thing I want to know, because I know I listened um to your uh to your episode where you did talk a little bit about the podcast. I know that there's a full recap on Moni's Patreon. So hit that up if you want the full full. Um, but I did listen to you talk about it with Danny uh Pellegrino, and you mentioned that yeah, it's four hours and that every table had people sitting that knew Monique personally, which makes me real sad for Monique. Yeah, like, I think she knew that they were going to film this one. Um, <sighs> my guess is because they had so many people scheduled to come from the show. Like Karen was scheduled to be on there. Candace was scheduled to be on there. And they needed to have this uh, probably because it, that was how she was able to stay on because as at this time, the fight had already happened. So if no one's going to film with her, they're not going to show it. So they wouldn't put it up. And so everyone that, a lot of people that I talk to, like when you see me sipping tea, it's like, I don't know, 30 to 40 minutes before the thing actually started. And then a large group, like an entourage of people go into like this green room type situation that was like right in front of me with all the camera crew, probably like an eight to 10 person crew, um, a lot of people, her panel, she had like seven people on the panel, um, including herself and Ashley and all these producers, all these other people, like these extra people who were there and then in that room. And then a few people trickle in and sit down like at our table, all the tables are pushed together. It probably held like a hundred or so people. And then all of those people come out of the green room and fill in the seats. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's how this is going to work. And then there are people at our table because they were like reserved seats. <laughs> And so people were at our table and a few of them knew like her from when she used to be like a redskin wife and um, Mm -hmm. they lived in her neighborhood. Like they were talking to two ladies at my table and there was probably eight people total at our table. And when Chris was making rounds, people knew him. Like they were talking to him as if they were Mm. like old friends. Like, oh, Mm. hey, Chris. And he was like, oh my God, hi. Like she was making her rounds like, oh my God, hey. Like, and then she had to film with Ashley. That scene where you see them sitting down. I'm directly behind her at that point. You can see me turn around and go, oh shit, there's a camera. (laughs) (laughs) I set up a little straighter. I'm eating toast because it was delicious toast. I remember to this day how good that toast was. It was so so perfect i couldn't believe it and i am just like okay they're filming that and then like another 35 minutes go by and all the seats are completely filled and i would say about between 30 to 40 percent of the people there probably had some connection or knew her the rest were definitely fans but without her people there that she probably was like hey will you come they def i don't think they would have made it or it was people who did not have they weren't the closest of friends to her because it mm-hmm. didn't feel like a lot of people there were like oh yeah I used to know Monique way back when and they really wanted to like kind of show that they were so close to her or something so they came and paid money for a ticket for an event to show that they were close to their friend yeah yeah and I I that like it kind of it adds to this like thing that I feel about Monique which is that she tries way too hard and it's so sad right because I actually think like Monique in her confessionals is really funny. She is absolutely, in my opinion, 
the most gorgeous woman we have seen on Bravo. Today. Oh, and, and in person. I mean, I, I can't even imagine. And I was with Ashley too. And I oh, could yeah. not believe, and Ashley is gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. She looks great on camera. I think yeah. that is one of the prettiest casts I've ever seen in yes. my life. Like it's insanity yes. to me how they hit the nail on the head every time. But Monique in person is breathtaking. Like it's one yeah. of the most flawless looking humans I've ever seen. Yeah. And like, so, you know, Monique, the underlying issues I have with her are, you know, the fact that she kind of seems like an anti-vaxxer. She definitely is saying some shit on Twitter that is very problematic and like borderline QAnon. So like, she does these really crazy things, which kind of tells me like how, I don't know, it just, she, she seems like somebody who came into whatever she had too early and she hasn't had time to like refine around it because she's gorgeous. She's got a, her kids are insanely cute, but she has to do this podcast and she has to do this grand podcast and she has to make flyers for the podcast and she needs to like do all these extra things. And it's like, Monique, you could just be Monique. And actually that's more than enough. I her team a lot i'm like mm-hmm. the staff that she has in this office a it doesn't make sense why it was nece- why it's necessary but also <laughs> fill out the room if you know how put out feelers on the social media have your social media people look it up and see who would want to come because whether these people were in personally or personally invited by monique or whether they were people who used to know her who wanted to be close and wanted to be on tv which is also very possible and they paid money for a ticket they a yeah. lot of people had some kind of connection with her she walked in with at least anywhere between 15 to 25 people like or, 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 that were there that seemed to be able to be in that vip room with her where bravo was filming and i'm like and why didn't your staff feel put out feelers for how many people would come or where they would be like just put out a poll on instagram you know yeah. who's in the area you know monique is having this thing and hype it up so much that it wasn't just an accident on the the, the restaurant's page that my mama clicked it and was like we were there <laughs> make it like a big big thing have the restaurant promote it or and then or get a smaller venue if you have a smaller venue and that's packed pre-COVID, yeah. then you look like you did something. Right. Even Karen, when she did the big reveal of her La Dame at Tyson Square Mall, she did it in the mall and she put out feelers and she put it all through uh, social media and Instagram and people were finding about it on the day off and then yeah. still making it to that event. So uh, I think, yeah, you're right. Her, her she, she has a team, but they are not the smartest. Tool yeah. And for people who are getting paid. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they are the, really the right people that she should be working right, with. Right, because yeah. it was a good event and it was actually very fun. And it just made me feel like if you're going to have all these heavy hitters of of seven, of uh, seven, uh, five to seven people from major stuff she had some really great people up on that stage and also ashley who was on the stage and she was talking this is right after dean right after we found out about michael like that should have been hyped because we didn't get a lot of information from ashley post this like you know big thing that happened with michael that also happened around the same time and people would have probably loved to be there and know what was happening before get at least any sense of what she's gonna do with this man after he just cheated on her in front of the whole world like we would and that's something i talked about when i recapped that day on my podcast was it did not seem like she had any plans on leaving him and lo and behold she hasn't so it seemed like they just they kind of dropped the ball because this was something that you really could have made fun and made live and i also just think that she needs to rebrand that name is not Mm -hmm. it's very pretentious it's a very pretentious (laughs) name it's cute but it does seem like it's calling people to task and i'm not a parent and i still would it doesn't feel inclusive it doesn't feel like you have access to her uh, as like a mommy blogger it feels like if you ever find yourself tired and don't want to have seven arms coming out of your body don't click here (laughs) yeah yeah and i think that's my issue with monique is that she is trying too hard to do too much to make a point And people that do that much to try to make a point and try to make themselves feel like really important, that it's coming from a place of deep insecurity and sadness, because you're not doing that for other people, you're doing it for yourself, right? So it just, it kind of, yeah, it's super sad. It kind of made me sad too, this episode when like, the way that she found out about everybody going to Portugal, (laughs) it kind of made me sad for her, because I'm like, guys, 
I was like, <laughs> and I was like and the silver diner. Oh my gosh. Over tuna tartar. Oh my, oh my tuna gosh. tartar. Silver diner. I love diner. silver. I go to silver. I used to go every <laughs> single weekend because so we lived next door to a silver diner, but the one they went to is the one in Bethesda. It's on the it, it's on yeah. um the row, and it's like I just described today. It's like diner food, but like pretentious. It's like <laughs> pretentious diner, and it's it yeah. has like good avocado toast and green juices, and they put pomegranates on the avocado toast, and it's very yummy. And I was sitting there going. Mm. I mean, if somebody had to let me down nicely that I wasn't going to be invited to a trip, that's a great place to do it. <laughs> yeah, the the food that they ordered looks so good. That yeah. So we'll talk look, before we get into a Potomac. Um, I wanted to ask you. So, who is your absolute favorite person? I'm going to limit it to Bravo because I know that you are um you're you're actually to me my patron saint of uh bachelorette because you got me into it this season. So <laughs> that's for that's for another day. But on Bravo, who is your absolute most favorite person that you love to watch that you know is so fucking problematic but you love it anyway? Uh, that's going to have to be Bethany. I mean, she's so problematic off the off Yay! off camera. And, but it, I mean, if you don't think that she made that show, people really are like, oh, I can't stand her. I'm glad she's gone. I'm like, she used to be the most polarizing individual. She mm-hmm. made that show what it was. And for her to be such a standout on a show like New York, where the entire cast is top heavy hitters, they're top heavy. Mm-hmm. And she still carried it home. She was always so imperfect that it made it, so good to watch because she would speak with such authority and then break out crying and she cried so much for someone who was so like strong headed she cried all the time and like the, and the, they all gunned at her as if she was this she never claimed herself to be this queen bee but more the way they regarded her made her that and i think people hate her because they think that she wanted that role and she's like i'm literally not trying to do that i didn't really ask for margaritas to be the reason I'm a millionaire. I didn't ask for that. I literally was just making shit and making vegan stuff when nobody wanted it. And they really hate her for it. And we hate her for it. And she would just start crying. Cause she's like, why are y'all being mean to me? I didn't do anything. Like Dorinda would be Dorinda with the nutcracker and Ramona with the, you don't support other women. And Bethany's like, what are you talking about? We're not friends. Like, yeah, it just was, right. she was just such a good housewife to me. Cause they hated her so much. And, and it is it's one of my greatest guilty pleasures is to watch her older seasons especially when she was pre-poor I actually don't think she changed that much I don't find no. her to be that different from when we first met her to how she was when she left I mean other than she constantly was brand placement like that's yeah. the only thing and I'm like go ahead girl she's like I'm never going back to being poor again and I get it yeah and even her poor was like not poor she was like yeah. not actually poor, but she did have that scene at the grocery store, which will remain. It was very you know, sad. I mean, her her, her apartment <laughs> with like the first Jason or something like it was very yeah, you know, she had the oh, dog. Okay. It was very small, and I mean, when we're watching like Manhattan moms and like everyone's rich, they casted her to be the poor girl. They absolutely yes. did, and it was like really <laughs> cute to see her. And she wasn't even posing; like she wasn't like a, a, a Simon and uh, Alex. She wasn't like trying to act like she had all this money. She knew she didn't have it. And to see her go from being Jill's lap dog and right then she just kind of accepted that. And Jill be like, oh, I'll take care of you. Like, I'll give you money and make you feel good and make you feel important. And for her to kind of like take that to like to to really take it with the grain of salt and then become this entity they really hate her like that Ramona is mad and it makes me laugh so much because Ramona used to really look down on her and now the girl got more money than Ramona yeah I think that's that's the main issue between Ramona and Bethany oh god I love New York I like deeply flawed humans they do a lot of good her actions are good in the rest of the world she's doing so much right now for uh, Hurricane Edda she's like She's yeah, the one she out did great. Her. She does great with that. She does a lot of good stuff, but she's so deeply flawed, and she has so many. And then she does that problematic oh stuff. My. She has so many insecurities, and then she picks the wrong fights online, and she just has so many, uh, you know, wrong takes on stuff. You know, that is so fascinating <laughs> yeah. for me. She's a very fascinating human. Yeah. Being. that's why I like her. Anybody who chooses to go on a podcast in October to talk about a song that came out in what fucking July. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like why are we? So why are you got so, to her? She's probably yeah. Like, it's, I'm like, yeah, that thing is like hot take. Day. I have a I have a hot take about WAP. It's like, bitch, this this is sailed. We've been past this now. Everybody has had their take on it. Please yes. know your space. <laughs> but, exactly. Yeah, I do. I do love her as well. That's a. I think she's good yeah. One. She's definitely and for you to phrase it that way. Thank you, because when people ask me like, "Who is your favorite?" I'm like, "Girl, nobody knows. Everybody is so bad that we never know." Yeah. I like someone yeah. today. They piss me off tomorrow, so I have no idea. I, I, it's never. I never have one specific specific person. Maybe from a franchise. Maybe dead and gone. Correct. But yeah. if for problematic faves, it's it's got to be Bethany. I think she's really great i mean at second one although she's a little too problematic now it's probably going to be lisa vanderpump i actually thought she did great as a housewife because she was so damn awful so i hate when people are like she, they're so bad she's awful get her off my screen i'm like she's manipulative that's the point oh, that's what we're bad. watching she's a producer yeah. okay yeah I'm like that's great that's what we want set brandy up i'm here for it do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, even even Brandy's asking for yes, it. Yes, that's how we stay on the show. <laughs> Stick that People magazine in there. Tell her yeah. in front of Portia. Yes, say your parents are, you know, getting a divorce or something in front of yeah. Portia. Do it. Yeah. I like that stuff. Like, that's what I'm here for. Because then the moment that that goes away, they're like, we need a cash shake up. We don't know what to do. There's nothing good yeah. happening. And I'm like, exactly. Because yeah. we got to rid of yeah. everybody problematic. Yeah, it's um, just great. Yeah, I love Lisa it. Lisa Rinna ruined that franchise yeah mm. she's doing too much she doesn't do a good job of being yeah. a subtle manipulative producer she's too much of a hustler and she's you know that's not that's not what we watch uh housewives for. absolutely i agree yeah. and if i yeah. had to yeah. answer very quickly my favorite bachelor person it would probably no. be rachel Lindsay anyway i mean because how can you not you know what i can't wait to find out more about that person oh my gosh she's the first <laughs> She's the first black <laughs> suitor ever. Oh, oh okay. Um, she was on a season where even the bachelor who she was on was so confused as to why she was there because he's an idiot and she is not. She is a lawyer. Her dad was a federal <laughs> judge. She's from Dallas. It's the first time ever that they announced who the next bachelorette was going to be while the person was still on TV. Like she had oh, not been eliminated oh, yet wow. as from The Bachelor. And they were like, hey girls, we hear y'all. We hear you saying that she's way too smart for this man. Just know she's going to be the next Bachelorette. And she was still on the show. So we were going to watch The Bachelor that night and see her on the show, not having been kicked oh, off wow. yet. She was like in the final five. And they were like, yeah, we hear you. She's too good. We're just going to, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and uh, make her the actual Bachelorette. And she chose between a man who she absolutely loved who didn't want to get married right away. He didn't want to get engaged right away. He wanted to continue to date after the show. And a man who was going to propose the day of the final show. And let me just say, she is married now. So it worked oh. out. And she's oh, constantly oh, wow. trying to fight the injustice of Bachelor Nation and racism. I mean, she has been vilified for just being who she is. She has talked openly about the sexualization of Tasha and the promos and what it means to be black on this, in this, in this whole world and the kind of hate she's gotten and they, how much they've censored her. And she does not stop calling them out and she stays employed. So good shout out to her. She's no longer a lawyer, obviously, because she's too famous now, but she's amazing, gorgeous, smart, amazing. Okay. So now I have to watch this too. I have, I have, zero interest in the bachelor thing but now you made it so compelling i needed to no, i mean no, i no, no you, any i could honestly i could listen to you talk about this forever because it's just so fascinating you really truly did get me into it and now i'm like i want to watch Yay. all of that i want to watch bachelor bachelorette me bachelor in paradise i want all <laughs> of bachelor in paradise is lit that's how we got Tasha. <laughs> Well, she was on Bachelor, and that she was done dirty there too. They always doing them dirty. Yeah, because I know I don't watch. Do you watch Big Brother? I I don't really watch it. I only watch like a couple mm -hmm. of the celebrity ones. I watched the one where Brandy was on, and I think Candy. And so I've watched a little bit of that, but I know even with that, with Big Brother, we're also seeing a lot more of black women speaking out about the treatment of black people within the Big Brother community and Big Brother as a TV show. I think it's it's always hello it's always the black women right like it's always they're the ones that are doing all the fucking work yes it's amazing that there's more of that and i'm i'm actually really glad that right now on bravo 
the greatest show that everybody is currently talking about is Potomac. Like as much as it sucks that like Candace had to get dragged, it is yes. now, this is now an iconic franchise. Like it, it is now yeah. up there, you know, with like- And who would have thought with the name Potomac of all places? Yeah. That's like nobody in Maryland was talking about Potomac and now we're talking about Potomac. I think they just had to like <laughs> rebrand it. You know what I mean? Because like DC, it was right. so funny is that the Housewives of DC cast mm -hmm. were all living in the same places as the Potomac lady. Mm -hmm. They were all over the place. Right. Only like a handful right. of them actually lived in DC. And it's the same thing as what's happening with Potomac. Only two of them live in Potomac and the rest live all over the place. But they couldn't rename it that because that's not what we want. We like, that's dead and gone. It didn't work. The FBI was mad or whatever. Secret Service got involved. <laughs> and now we need something else. But Andy loved the area. He thought it was just like, yeah. I mean, how could you not? There's so much. People get very shocked with how expensive oh, it is yeah. to live there. They're like, wait, y'all right. y'all are tripping. Like there is where the DC is on par with New York yeah. in rent right now. Yeah. It's insanity. Yes. So of course you're gonna want to like give it to something, but what else would we have called it? The beltway, the rail of the beltway. <laughs> Of four ninety five, the housewives of four ninety five, the housewives of ninety five South on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, I, I've right. spent my entire life doing Thanksgivings in the area, so I just, I it just Pot Potomac makes me feel warm, like Thanksgiving. Like that's how much I love watching it. That's oh, how. I absolutely love it. I love watching and googling where they go. Yeah. Like, oh yes, that's my place. I'm about to go there. I've gotten a couple of good spots from that. So. Shout out to them. Right. I appreciate whenever they don't give me the title of the place, I get mad. I'm ready to tweet somebody. I'm like, well, what if we want to know where they got that beautiful drink? What if I want to go get yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny the episode where Wendy had the sip and see for her daughter. Arthi brought up the yeah. point that Robin only got there on time because she had to travel a lot less because Arthi knew where both of those places, like she knows where Robin was and she knows where that event was. It was a direct direct she didn't even have to get on the beltway she could take the inner roads to get into only and in silver spring so she got there before everybody else because yeah. she didn't get and on traffic <laughs> i'm always saying that's why robin is so late because they do everything in dc yes. on the side of dc and robin lives outside of baltimore that's right. a trip and then they make her fly out of dca and she has to pass yes. the largest international yes. airport to get there right. yes yeah, she might she, as well be in Delaware. Could actually go, she could go to BWI and fly out much quicker. And she could do everything in Baltimore much quicker. But That's why she misses flight. They have it on the other <laughs> side of the Beltway. And that's no way that I would be late too. That's how it would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're always shaming her. I feel for Robin. Because yeah. I'm like, don't shame her. You guys just live really far away. But also, I mean, Robin's a mess and I love her. All right, so Potomac. <laughs> so on this week's episode of Potomac, the ladies went on a trip to Portugal without Monique. So Karen and Monique meet, as we discussed, at Silver Diner. Okay, have, look like they have a delicious spread between the two of them. And Karen tells Monique that they're going to Portugal and Monique is not invited. And the thing that I noticed about this is that, so, you know, I actually appreciated that Monique was like, hey, I'm not going to hold it against you if you want to be friends with Candace or if you want to be friends with me. Like, it's fine. And I was like, hey, that's so mature of Monique to say that. Because the interesting thing was Karen doesn't own anything that she said, really, because she does not come at Monique the way she came at Candace. Did you guys notice that? Like, That's why she's queen. She <laughs> knows how to stir the pot without putting the ladle in. I guess. To me, I read that. <laughs> to me, I read that as Karen. Karen definitely is like maybe a little bit scared of Monique. And not scared, but like I think that she's more intimidated by Monique. I think she feels like she has more authority to talk to Candace in whatever way and be honest to Candace like yes. a baby. I Right. definitely think she has more I think I don't know if she necessarily if I would um believe that she felt intimidated by Monique as much as she felt like Monique is more of her equal yes um versus Candace not so much like she is like I this woman is younger she is um definitely not at the level that she probably that Karen probably thinks she could be and wants to kind of counsel her and be like you know the big sister the auntie type and so I think she definitely feels like she has a little bit more 
grace when it comes to what Candace does because she can influence that more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Monique, I don't think you can influence. No, no, I think Monique <laughs> yeah. has generally made up her mind. The ladies are packing and there's just a lot of a lot of packing footage, general Bravo packing footage, but Ashley is packing and Ashley and Michael have a conversation. And now <laughs> Ashley says to Michael, are you going to behave <laughs> while I'm gone? And while she's talking to him, Michael like lifts up little baby Dean and like puts him up against his face, like next to his face, like, oh, look how cute we are. And all that really did was just amplify how not cute Michael is. Like I saw how cute baby Dean was and I was like, Jesus Christ, Michael, you are hideous. <laughs> and then they cut to Ashley and Ashley's eye was bleeding. Yeah, This is such a stressful conversation. Ashley's no. actual like her va- like it, it like she had popped a blood vessel. I remember that being on um oh, on uh I didn't know she that. had that on social media oh at the God. time that she had popped the blood vessel. I was like girlfriend around the same time as she had like had a, a a milk duct infection like a little bit later. I'm like girl, you going through a lot, yeah. and this man is out here cheating on you. Leave him, <laughs> yes. leave him. Your body is breaking down from the stress. Yes. His entire face looks like it's a blood vessel that's been. <laughs> <laughs> I was so focused on the baby. I did not pay attention to Ashley. But I, I was just wondering. They made up so quickly and so fast. I'm so jealous of that. Like he did something hideous, and then they just had a couple of conversations, and they seem to have made up within a couple. Of well, weeks. girl, <laughs> you, you got to get that paycheck for Bravo. So it's like you have to get the show on the road, I guess. And I guess, yeah. I mean, their conversation, their, their relationship is wild. So we also find out that Ashley is super close to Monique specifically because Monique knew that Ash- Ashley and Michael had an open relationship prior to Ashley telling the rest of the girls and Ashley writes a statement about Candace and the knife fight, the butter knife fight or the butter knife incident, um, you know, to kind of talk about uh, Candace's character for Monique for this um, lawsuit, or I guess charges. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. And then she says she did it because the Samuels had her back. Let me tell you something. Okay. The Samuels have footage of Michael doing all kinds of groping. Like, absolutely. It's it's like, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And it's so obvious that, like, Ashley is only being nice to Monique because of that. And I, I 100% believe that Monique is a little late to learning how to play the game because Monique isn't as slick as like a Giselle or a Karen, right? Like she's still trying to figure out, figure it out because she does, she is shady and she says really funny shady shit, but I don't think that she can navigate it as well as the other women because obviously she popped off. She decided to, you know, drag a bitch. And like, so she doesn't have that kind of like that skill set that like Giselle does, but I think she's slowly coming around to it. And she saw a partner in Ashley because Ashley's like, she's like the kid's sister that they like make fun of all the time. And so I think she said, you know what? Giselle's not that nice to Ashley. I'm going to get Ashley on my side. She also did try it with Giselle. I noticed. Mm -hmm. I think that was because she really didn't want Giselle to expose everything about this rumor. I think that's why she got so mad at Monique because it was rumored that Giselle was going to bring all this to light last reunion. And then at the last minute chose not to, which is why we get her and Giselle having these filming scenes at the beginning of the season where they're at founding farmers and having like a whole lunch and planning something for Ash. Yeah. Because she's like, Oh yeah, let me get on your side. Let me, I'm going to, I'm going to, I will film with you because they always say you can only stay on the show as long as people will film with you. I think she's making nicey nice with everyone because she was trying to bury this rumor. Mm. And because Candace, who she didn't think she had to worry about. I think she genuinely thought she had to worry about Giselle. Yeah. And if Giselle is on her good side and they're, you know, making nice and planning things for Ashley, she doesn't have to worry about her. And then she didn't think she had to worry about an actual friend of hers who is bringing around an ex friend of hers who is seemingly still really out to get her. I mean, Sharice is thirsty, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, Monique, you did this too. Yeah. You tried to do this to Giselle. Yes. Of course, Giselle was going to try to take get you back with this. You did this to her when you brought around her, boy, at the time, boyfriend's ex-girlfriend. Yeah. And you had her film. Yeah. So Giselle bringing up this trainer is not any, is not far out. Here's the thing. If she, she brought, um, you know, Cherise and she brought Giselle's uh, boyfriend's ex and all that, to the show she tried it with Giselle and then 
if you do that with Giselle, you should be ready for Giselle uh-huh. to get back at you. And when she does, you don't react. You should brush it off like Karen does and just laugh yeah, it off. But that. she reacted and that's where she's not able to take, she gave it, but she couldn't, she is not able to take it. So I'm very concerned that there's some kind of truth to this. Yeah. Cause she is working <laughs> overtime to get none of this on air and it's going to come out. I mean, it, yeah. it, she's yeah. going to bring it all at the reunion. I think she's not going to stick around. I think she, this is going to be her last season. I think she's going to try to choose to do that. Yeah, her reaction says that there must be some truth to it because she, otherwise she would have just laughed off and said, Giselle, you're being messy. That's not true. But she is reacting so over the top to this that you feel that maybe there is something there. You don't pop off like that if you don't believe that something's true. Speaking of, so the ladies go to Portugal and the big discussion in Portugal is what's going on with Jamal and Giselle? And obviously, Karen brings this up because she wants to go all in on Giselle. And I mean, who would blame her? I don't blame her. I think that's absolutely on par with the way that these Housewives shows work and they should work. But Karen questions if Jamal and Giselle are real. And she's insistent that Jamal should be a part of the circle in Potomac, which basically is code for like, why isn't he filming with us? Right. That's basically what. Karen's trying to get it. Right. Is he serious? Is he going to move to Maryland? Does this even mean anything? No, of course he's not. Yeah. Yeah. They had that ass house church hug at the airport. Like, there's no fucking way that they're doing anything with each other. I don't believe that. (laughs) I don't believe that any of that is really that real. I think they might even just be like best buds. I think that Giselle knows what's going on with Jamal and like his philandering ways. And I don't think that Giselle is really in a true, like, isn't there a picture of them on Instagram where she's, it's like the plot in the storyline or something like that? Like they're literally wearing t-shirts. <laughs> Giselle does love to get literal. She does. Her. She loves to have very literal t-shirts. And so, yeah. you know, Karen's basically questioning whether or not the relationship is real. And let me tell you again, nobody would pop off this hard and get so defensive If it didn't strike a nerve and it wasn't a little bit real. And what really shook me was the fact that Robin later on says that she's never met Jamal. That's crazy to me because she's been friends with Robin for decades. And the man has been the kid's father for decades. Yes. And it blew my mind. Is he really just never around his kids? That's that's trash. Yeah. 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 Well, we know he's trash. But Karen came to play at this dinner because she ordered a glass of milk <laughs> she was like nope i'm keeping all my senses i'm gonna make sure you get yeah. drunk and i'm gonna ask you questions. it was amazing <laughs> candace goes is that cow milk and i was like yeah same same question like what there's just a tall glass of milk at the table and i was like god karen is amazing we also find out that wendy was named after wendy's and she is truly That's the- hilarious. Oh my god. That was that was the cutest story. I did not expect it. Nobody I think around the table expected that story to go there, especially when she started talking about how she's an immigrant and everybody was like Oh, yeah, she's going to talk about the four degrees again. And she did. She was like, it's about, you know, so let me tell you a little story about my degrees. And I'm like, oh, that was tongue in cheek. She was trying to be like, I know y'all are going to be talking about this. So let me just say one more thing. So that's not what I'm talking about at all. Like, it was very, very cute. That made me like her so much. I mean, I've been on the fence like Karen with Wendy since the beginning. But this particular moment warmed me up for her. Yeah. It's okay. She can she can take a joke. She understands. She knows what's happening and that she has spoken about her degrees way too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's like trying to save herself from going down that path again. Yeah. And also <laughs> on the topic of like her trying too much with the degrees, I have to say, because this is like such a non-important thing, but it just keeps coming up and it drives me crazy because I really like Wendy. But Wendy is coming too hard for Karen about this stuff. Like... I think I think Wendy is having a private experience. I think that she is feeling some type of way internally and she is just coming too hard for Karen. Like, why do you need Karen's approval? My theory for that is that Wendy thought since she knew Karen from before that she would be the one that welcomes her the most. And she's been That's sort of a great shocked. point. She's shocked that for some reason, Karen is not quite welcoming. And 
she's also realized that Karen is sort of she's basically the star of this franchise and she's like why won't you like me what have I done to not for you to not like me and the more she tries the more Karen gets aloof and that's driving her nuts yeah yeah I also think Karen is weirdly insecure around Wendy and I wish she wasn't and I don't really understand why she is the idea that as soon as Wendy got there, she was like, oh, never heard of her. Don't know her at all. Yeah. And Wendy's like, girl, we were on the same board. The board got like eight people. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like, we do know each other. We've served together multiple times. And it was like an unnecessary rudeness. And Karen felt like she had to be like, oh, no, you have to earn your spot. You don't just get to come and kiss this ring. And I honestly think it's because Wendy it, it, it is some kind of <laughs> rehashing of Karen's life powerful husband Mm -hmm. she's in a loving marriage she has kids and she's taking care of her kids and everything like that just so happens that also wendy has a million degrees and she's very smart and accomplished on her own right which is something that karen is just doing now and she's it's like costing her her family it's costing her 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 marriage in order to have that and i think that karen is weirdly insecure about it and wendy needs too much validation that it's a little it's a little insecure as well mm -hmm. right so that's what i was going to say karen's insecure made her aloof and act like that but then because karen is acting like that it's actually making wendy insecure too. yeah she's craving for karen to it's re- of her and there's and really like no her. reason for karen to not like her other than she was like i think that she's gonna come in here and try to act all nice to me or be uh, on my level and she's not this is my show we used to be on the right, same exactly team, but this is my show like, we're not on the, the board anymore and that's what i'm right. like karen but that was so unnecessary i think it was an unnecessary rudeness wendy was not expecting that but i I also think that it's yet another older woman who is disapproving of her no matter how great she yeah. is like her husband's mom yeah exactly, oh, exactly. and the husband's mom is this yeah. elder woman oh, i love who is this. this grand dom of everything yeah. she's very major in the, in the in the nigerian community and she and for no matter what reason wendy is not good enough for her uh. she's not smart enough she's not accomplished enough and she is like i have four degrees, two kids, a loving husband. I don't rely on him. What else do you want from me? There's literally nothing more I can do. And she's like, how dare any other woman reject me? Mm-hmm. Like she's, right. I think it's, it's, it's hitting home to her how yeah. easy it is to reject her. She can't just write off his mom anymore as just like not being accepting if another woman in the same age group think is the same way. Right. Well, I think what's interesting that I think, Mani, I think you hit it on the head is that we all sort of have, we get triggered based on some sort of, this is like, this is like serious cycle, like serious cycle analytics right now. But triggers as that happen as an adult are truly because it hits some sort of mm-hmm. inner child that feels some type of way, right? Like that's really what it is. And so when you grow up in a community, especially where you are told that the, the mm-hmm. opinions of mm-hmm. elders, especially matter a lot and what the community says about you, especially matters a lot and here is Wendy coming into a space where there is truly an elder that's what Karen is and like you said Monty she probably is around Eddie's mom's age there's a woman who does not approve of her and there it is again right there it is again feeling like what else can I do to make sure that every elder in every community in every space respects me and I think I think she's she's definitely having She's, there's a lot d- deeper issues that Wendy is tar- triggering right now in her inside of her. And it's, I think it even goes even deeper. That's how she came so hard at Ashley because it was about her kids and th- their grandmother hasn't even met them. Right. Mm. And she's doing everything she can to be this like amazing mother for her kids and for it to be not an option to leave her newest baby at home. And she's mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm, she's trying to like work overtime to be the perfect mom because she's risked so much. And her husband has risked so much for this family and her home. And I'm not saying Eddie's like this, but I could see someone like Wendy being like, what if my husband sees this and sees it was an option for me to bring Cameron and I did it. Mm-hmm. Like he has to now do all this. And, and mm. I think she's very, mm-hmm. she's very cognizant of 
at any point because he is a lawyer, which means they live in logic. She's a professor. They live in logic. And so she's like, as much as she loves her husband, there is a possibility that one day they could separate or they could be divorced, God forbid. And there's a resentment that could happen of, I gave up my family for you. I did all these things for you. And she's, I think she's very aware of that possibility. And she works overtime to make sure that he never will resent her. And she's trying very hard to do that, like by not only relying on his money, by not spending too, too much time away from her the, the kids. No matter how many things she's doing, we see her giving them lessons and they're learning yep. about their roots. They're keeping up with Nigerian tradition. She's making sure that they're good boys. Like she's constantly involved in the home. And so he can never say that he gave up something and she didn't do the return. And for him to look and see that, oh, Ashley has a baby. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, I could have mm-hmm. had my baby. I could have kept up with my great mothering. I could have been on time with everything that I want to do and not feel insecure about leaving my kid because no one gave me this option and I think that's why she went so hard at Ashley and yet another person being like I think she saw a bad mother to Ashley's good mother and I think she was very worried about that because she doesn't want to ever be perceived that way she's also another one who's very worried about perception yes very much so because it's all about perception to her community to uh the audience um you know on Fox News and CNN and, you know, and in the show, she wants to be perceived as the role model that people can look up to, but she's not in this particular arena. It's Karen who rules the roost. So it's kind of um, hard for her to come to terms with that and understand that she's not the top dog here. And that's, uh, that's kind of hitting her hard, I feel. And the whole Ashley thing was more of, I, I thought she was at, at first, she was more angry at the production, at production for not letting her know she could have brought her kid too. I think she was mad at her for not extending yeah. it to her and, and production, yeah. yes, but Monique didn't give her that option and it's her home. Right. And she's like, I can't yell at the woman who's hosting it and I can't yell at my employer. So I'll just yell at her. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of Ashley, also, one other thing that happened in this episode is that Ashley obviously had this pep talk with Michael before she left. And when she's there, she calls Michael and Michael does not pick up. So she finally, first of all, my question is, why aren't you sharing your location with each other? Okay, your husband already cheated on you. So like, let's change that up. Secondly, she calls Michael and she can't find him. She finally gets him on the phone and she's asking him all these questions. And this man says, this man says, and it blew my mind. This man <laughs> says to her on the phone, he says, I can't be molested like this. I said, sir, oh my God, <laughs> how dare you use that kind of language? Oh my sir. God. Right? Like, how do you, how did you even come up with that word? It must be very top, choice. Of, top of mind, tip of the tongue for you. I mean, yeah. I'm like, he's, I said he's from Australia. They speak English. And unless that's another slang word that I just don't know about, which I uh, don't think it is. Um, yeah, I don't really understand where he got that from. Um, <laughs> the fact, I mean, not even harass. We went straight to like the worst kind of harass. Right. <laughs> God, I was like, you know what? That those are choice words, but you know, apparently they make up after a little bit. I said, all right, Ashley, you do you. I guess this makes you happy. Secure that bag with your second baby. It's fine. But all in all, I love Potomac. I think it's still just so funny. And also yeah. on the topic of Karen, I want to say that if I was for some reason, I don't know why I would be, but if I was ever in the same social circle as Karen Huber, I would absolutely want her to be my friend. And if she didn't like me and she ignored me, I would also be really, really upset. <laughs> like, yeah. I have to like, of that group, I'd want her to like me the most. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. aspirational friendship. <laughs> yeah, she is. It's, it must be like super fun to be around Karen and watch her in real life go through all uh-huh. of these motions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So the other magic, obviously, that happened this week is Salt Lake City premiered yesterday. Now, Mani, you were able to watch the premiere earlier and you were able to get on a Zoom with the ladies from Salt Lake City. Yes. First of all, for, for a premiere episode, this was masterfully crafted. It was such a good episode. There was so much stuff. We learned so much about these women that are just like, it, I feel like these are the most multi-layered women that we've seen so far on Bravo. Like I, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, whatever, they look like they all get the same plastic surgery. We know why they all get it at Heather's place. But like, I wasn't really interested, but my God, are these this women is, fascinating? 
this is an acid trip for sure. But yes. But also, I heard rumors, and maybe Manny, you know, that first the producers were Beverly Hills producers trying to put together something, and then in the end, somewhere along the line, they decided to take all of that and give the production uh, rights to the producers of New York, and that's why they have like footage from three months ago. Mm. Yeah, I have talked about this on my show that the the production timeline is a bit um, all over the place. Because, uh, for instance, like Whitney's wedding was filmed as like an event. Normally for Beverly Hills or the West Coast entirely, that would be the finale. Absolutely. We would have gotten that as finale, even if we never knew them. That kind of a big party. We never would have gotten this early and definitely not in an introduction scene as like a hi this is us not that kind of not that kind of footage and yeah they did have to switch production companies um pretty much close to the end they had pretty much wrapped and then they switched production companies and they kind of like did a little bit more b-roll and that's what took so long because this was filmed a while ago yeah a while ago i mean the vanderpump rules people were there like a while ago and that was towards the end of their of their season filming um when lala took the girls to uh salt lake city um that was months and months ago so for them to you know have to fire at the last minute or you know replace production crews that's almost unheard of but bravo was like listen it's a pandemic so we gotta make this good and we gotta make this count people are at home doing nothing else but watching. So we <laughs> really need to give them something to watch. And um, also people were starting to go back to work at that point. So shows were starting to repick up production. And I think Bravo was like, we can't just give them anything. We actually have to make it worth something. Otherwise, we're going to have an OC in our hands where mm -hmm. um, we're, you know, scratching at straws. And this is like the first time we're really seeing something that was shot more real time that it won't have to do with COVID this late in the year that we're watching it. Yeah, yeah. That's it was really so important because Atlanta's not going to have that. Potomac is the mm -hmm. only one, and that's because it filmed last year. The only thing that's yep. been filmed this year that we're seeing this year that may not have to do with COVID, or it was, Salt Lake City was filmed last year, but we're seeing it in more real time. And it's, this is the only show. Everything else from now on, we're going to have to address it. Yes, exactly. Um, They just, uh, the way that it was crafted, I think was great. I don't know if every episode is going to be this good. I was just really into every single thing. Oh, the they music gave a lot. Really it was super sized. I was very shocked. There was so much to unpack. They gave us like two or three events. We had events. We had parties. We saw homes. We went on tours. We saw businesses. We saw kids. We saw husbands. We saw fashions, unreasonable fashions. Heather's heels in the middle of the snow on the gravel, walking like a half mile to get to Jen's house. Jen's moving all the furniture for one party for a person that isn't even herself. And she's hosting it at her house. And it has nothing to do with Meredith and yet everything to do with Jen. And it just makes me laugh. And we get a wedding and there's a stripper pole and then there's a fight and then we actually have dynamics like yeah. Heather versus Lisa and then Jen versus Mary I'm like this is a lot for 49 minutes this is how a season premiere should happen where you can quickly see that each of these women have so much to give and so that you, I could see like three or four years worth of drama for each oh, of these yeah. women and plus plus you know all of these Plus a crazy woman marrying her step grandfather. Yeah. And I, and the funny thing is that there was so much hype around Mary, right? And her situation with her grandpa. We talked about it for like a second. It, it literally came up for a second when we learned a little bit about Mary. But there was so much other stuff about the other women that Mary's story about being married to her step grandpa was just like, it was, it was obviously it was like impactful, but against all of the other things that were happening I was like okay yeah like I was like all right cool I'm gonna roll with it let's do this I'm on board let me hear about your crazy ass relationship with your step grandpa who's not your husband like I was just it was just sewn in really well like whereas you know with B Beverly Hills they say like one thing and then there's dramatic music and you look at everybody's face and I feel like half of Beverly Hills is just a lot of that there's a lot of like weird like super soap opera like takes on it and on this it was like new york level like boom boom yes, boom like yes, one after yes. the other and i loved it so right off the bat who did you like the most and who did you not like the most um right off the bat i loved 
Um, Jen and Heather, I felt that Jen is very polarizing and instantly I was like, oh, people are either going to love her or absolutely mm-hmm. not like her. And that's how I like my housewives. I like them more mm-hmm. like Jenna's and Nini's. I like them more like either you are obsessed or you are like, they are the devil. Like I like them very much mm-hmm. so. Oh, they're okay. I don't like, okay. I don't want that. So mm-hmm. I love Jen and Heather. Um, so far I like the whole cast, except Meredith, I feel like is already over it. And I don't know how, cause we only just met her. Um, and I got the same kind of vibes on the, the live zoom call. I was texting people, um, from the, you know, the Bravo influencer world who were, were also watching together. We were all texting each other while on the, at the zoom premiere party, like is Meredith okay? Like, she seems like she's yeah. over it. Like, she seems annoyed. And her and Lisa do seem like they're the most conservative, like, the most um, the most pretentious of the bunch. They're the ones who are like, you must kiss this ring. The, I don't even think that either of them, at least not Lisa, is even still in the church, but she still acts the most church-adjacent. That means um. something to her, because she has a tequila company, don't know if she drinks it or not, thinks she does, so I don't know if she's in the church still but she does seem to have the most amount of care for how the church is how she's regarding the church and the church regards her even if she's not in it anymore i think she still practices in some way or another because she seems to really care about how heather you know is adjacent to her and she's like yeah no that's a that was a party girl and i'm like y'all mm-hmm. want to be why you you have to sign a freaking honor code i know that like yeah. There's no way she was that much of a party girl. But I like Lisa, oddly. I really do. She is an amazingly nice woman. And she sent me um, some of her tequila, which is actually fantastic. Oh. And so um, I absolutely enjoy that. I love anybody who's willing to have a good time. And I'm the good time <laughs> girl. Um, but <laughs> yeah, are you a good time girl? She is the good time girl. <laughs> I like Heather and I like Jen. And on... <laughs> at the premiere party they were also the most fun like they were the okay. most fun i love their energy jen was like all the black people in utah are in my family because there's not that many and i laughed my <laughs> ass off and she's like people are friends with me because they think i'm black heather was like that was me i thought she was black i didn't know and i <laughs> died so i was like okay i love them i think they're very fun and um i think i'll probably like whitney but i hope she brings it as much as they are uh, casting her to bring, you know what I mean? Like I feel yeah. like they casted her to be, be like the wild girl and the young hot girl, and I just want her to give me that energy because I didn't get it yet from the first. Yeah, episode. Well, yeah. Whitney is the one that slid down the pole in front of her dad, right? Right. Yeah. So that was a that was good. <laughs> it was a good start, but I want more. I mean, Jen is like fresh out of the bag. I love plastic surgery. I'm here to stir shit up. I don't really care. I'm my best mm-hmm. friend owns a plastic surgery bar or whatever. And I'm going to go get my Botox because I'm mm-hmm. lucky. Like I like that. She's very painfully honest about her personality. Like yeah. Whitney yeah. is uh, supposed to be the casted, you know, good time girl as well. But she, the first thing we meet of her is we were kicked out of the church because we were in love. And I'm like, yeah, but yeah. also yeah. because you slide down poles yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And, romper yeah. like <laughs> yeah. yeah and you weren't just in love you were having an affair with somebody who's 18 years older than you and if you were wearing your prom dress at your wedding uh how old were you when you probably got married fresh out like it's probably the only nice dress she had because she oh had got from a couple years ago <laughs> it's wild it's so crazy but um and and Whitney's dad I feel like he's gonna become like a meme favorite because that man's hair Steve's <laughs> hair is it a wig I don't know what's happening is it a choice is it 2001 and I'm at an emo concert for my chemical romance like I don't know but I loved it I was like we're just gonna accept this like it was weird because the dad the uh Whitney's dad looked like Whitney from Southern Charm like first yeah, he know, did he, he did have he that like <laughs> that like Victorian vampire ghost vibe that's what he that's the vibe he gave off but I, yeah, me too. I like uh, Heather and Jen. I think Jen is over the top, ridiculous, much like Karen. But at the end of the day, I think she is a little bit sensible and cares about some of her friends. And then Heather seemed just like a very sensible. She had a good head over those broad shoulders. I think she's <laughs> very sensible and uh, I liked her a lot. I think there's, uh, I think she can, she has a lot of stories to tell 
So, and Whitney was the least interesting to me, but she made the bold choice of starting the season with a wow renewal when that, you know, everybody knows that's like season three or four. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> also a vow renewal on Bravo usually means that you're headed for divorce. Nobody Correct. does a, bra- a vow renewal on Bravo who like stays together. We were really and- touching go over there with um, Dr. What's her name from... Married to medicine. She- Simone. Yeah. And, yeah. and she divorced so almost. They fought. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, you <laughs> know, it's reun- real. That's the best reunion I've ever seen where they actually reunite. Like they got a whole couple oh, to stay married. Married to the medicine best. is amazing. I was shocked. I was yeah. like, wow. They really <laughs> put them back together. Okay. I cried when I watched that one. <laughs> I thought, yes. I like had heard all this hype. It was on my DVR. I watched it one night, like back to back. And I was sobbing by the end. I was like, what is this? This is the best show ever. Simone, you're a monster. I'm so glad you're back together with your husband. I totally feel it. Like I get it. I've been there. But yeah, I um, out of these girls, though, I have to say for sure I'm with you guys on Jen and Heather, because I think in this day and age, if you are starting to you're going to be cast as a housewife on Bravo today in 2020. OK, you know what you're signing up for and you know the kind of woman you want to be and you know what's going to make you popular and you know what's going to get you going like Meredith. That's my issue with her is like she seems very much like I'm above this and I'm just here to talk about my businesses. Her son seems like a gem. I want more of her son on my screen. But like, she just seems over it. And I I wasn't, I just wasn't vibing with her. I was like, this is, you're not like an early seasons housewife. This is not 2008 that you are just starting a new housewife franchise. This is 2020. Like if you're going to be on Bravo, you need to bring it. And I love that about Jen. And I love that about Heather. I love their relationship. I love that Jen talks about you know, being Hawaiian and being married to a black guy and being Mormon and not realizing until she talked to him five years into them being married that black people weren't allowed (laughs) in the Mormon community. And like, now that she's, she's like, you know, converting to Islam or she is Muslim. It was like fantastic. It was, I loved it because she's over the top, like a Nini, like a late seasons Nini, but you still saw early seasons Nini when she's sitting and talking to her sons. Like, that's what I loved and it's ironic because I believe she and Nini don't go. Uh, yeah. I believe there was a feud between mm. Jen Shah and Nini. But um, that sounds about right. But I mean, yeah. it doesn't even matter because Nini's not even on the on the on, employed know. anymore by the network. So but it's actually a good certificate to follow Jen Shah. If Nini doesn't like you, then you have something going on there. Yeah, if um, you can piss Nini Leaks off. Yeah, and there's like not a lot of big heavy hitters in the housewives world anymore. Um, some they're all like kind of soft now. Like there's no more LVP, there's no more Nene, and there's no more right. Bethany. So we don't really know who these girls will get along with in the grand scheme of things. But also, COVID's going to go on for probably way longer than it should. So if we even get a Bravo Con or anything like that, we won't really know who will hit it off. I would yeah. love to see them do a new type of you know roundabout thing with um the girls and like so you know how like, they all went up against Ramona that I would mm-hmm. love to see that like with the who gets along with the with the gin shawls of the bunch or something like that that would be very yeah. fun yeah, yeah yeah for sure and um I love the thing that I loved about Heather is because she does talk about like growing up Mormon and being a quote-unquote purebred pioneer Mormon and then choosing to you know, pave her own path. And when she's talking to her daughters about it, like it's not easy raising Mormon daughters when you're somebody who kind of leaves the Mormon church. And she has this great mix of like respecting being Mormon and being raised Mormon and then also respecting who she is. But she, yeah, she's trying to be a different face of it. I think largely she's been kind of pro Black Lives Matter when as Mm -hmm. the Mormon church has been uh, historically mm-hmm. racist she's been pro mm-hmm. lgbtq when as the mormon church has been historically not um very homophobic and you know the pioneer thing people had a very mixed reaction to the to the to the tagline because it's mm-hmm. like girl don't play up the whole pioneer thing they're mm-hmm. literally not great uh what they had yeah. to do to you know native americans <laughs> so yep. please, yes. all the above to get that land and claim an entire state practically for themselves that's a lot it's it was a lot so 
be very careful about that. But um, I think that that's the whole point. She's like, I'm trying to be a new face for that and raise my girls with the same values that my family had to raise me, but with a little more tolerance because that never hurt anybody. Yeah. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. I loved it. And they definitely all have the same face. Like a lot yeah. of them have the same face because they're all just going to Meredith's and they're like, give me that. Or they're going to Heather's place and they're like, give me whatever it is that you sell here because I want that face. I love it. Um, right. I love right. it so much. I love that Jen threw a party that was definitely not for Meredith. That was definitely <laughs> just for, for the, the viewer to be like, this is Jen Shaw and this is the party that she throws. Um, I'm in love with her son, Rifi. Okay. I love to see a Muslim family on TV. Okay. The only, uh, the other options that we get are usually the Shahs of Sunset, which aren't really helping. No, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> they're really not. Um, but I just loved it. I loved all of that. But Mary, okay. We got to talk about Mary. Okay. So Mary. Mary, was Mary on the Zoom that you were on? She was not. Her and Whitney were not there. Oh. Because oh. I don't know what that woman would She's be like. She's also still private. Like, you can't tag her in things on Instagram. Yeah. It seems, someone said, like, why would the person with the most amount of secrets go on a reality show? It seems right. very strange, very sketch. She did bring it up with Teresa on their Instagram live the other night. She's like, so I know weird. So weird. So crazy, I mean, they love by the to way. say that I'm incest or whatever. And I think Teresa genuinely had no idea what the fuck was going on. I think she was <laughs> like, Teresa was like, I don't even know who you girl? are. Like, I don't know <laughs> anything about Because Teresa don't know anything about her own show. She doesn't know anything. So yeah. I mean, would imagine she was very lost and confused. And Mary keeps trying to address it. And to me, she's oversharing. I mean, she said it in the premiere, like, you know, it was in my grandmother's will that I remarry the man. And I said today on my podcast, I believe, allegedly, there could be some thing at play where if you, you know how when you marry your spouse, you cannot testify against each other. And mm -hmm. I think that for you to marry someone who was married to your Ooh. grandfather or your gra your grandmother to inherit a church and a business a church it really got me because i grew up in a black church and not pentecostal they're very very rigid so that's what i'm mm -hmm. saying is there's there could be something shady happening that it if she wanted it and wanted the money wanted to carry on the tradition she had to keep him in there so that the man never could testify against mm -hmm. her so yeah. that made sense to me because otherwise why would you need to keep a man in the family that was younger than your grandmother when she married him? But also for what reason, other than if he's going to sing like a canary? Yes, exactly. There's exactly. genuinely no reason why you would need to marry a man to have a church. None no, Not no. Not even a little bit. There's nothing None. that he can offer the church because usually female ministers but ministers in general especially female ones they are not supposed to be married especially pentecostal it doesn't hurt her to not be a married woman as a pastor she's not yeah. a man in that way so and in the will the first lady yeah and in the will what was stopping her grandma from just giving her the will, like giving her the church in the will like if that was the case you know what i mean like mm -hmm. if it was the grandma's church then she could have just given it to the daughters whatever but i agree also mary's fashion oh. Yeah, that's not good. good. Not great. No. We're, we're like in Giselle territory. So I um, mean, I think it's beyond Giselle. Just her look that she wore to Jen's party. I mean, she looked insane. She had that like seafoam green, beautiful color uh, dress, but it was like not, not the her. right dress. Not on her. She had a weird duffel bag. She was also holding what looked like a water bottle, like a giant one. I caught it and I'm going to post it on Instagram. She also had on white tights and black shoes. And I could see like her bra straps and she was so excited about telling everybody that it was like off the runway. And I was like, ma'am, you look insane. But that also, again, for my television viewing, okay, I need that kind of delusion. I do. I think that me keeps things really interesting because like Jen and, and Heather seems still like they have a good head on their shoulders. There still seems to be some sort of logic there, right? I love a person that is just so cuckoo that like there's no amount of like talking that is going to like help them get back into the right path of seeing where they may have fucked up. Like even with the story where Jen doesn't like her anymore because she told Jen that Jen smells like a hospital after <laughs> Jen's aunt had to have her both legs amputated 
it's the whole thing is so crazy. I mean, they're both the, delusional in that in that regard. I mean, she oh, said sir, it was very sir, insensitive. Jen certainly. was like, Are you making fun of my aunt? And I'm like, No, yeah. course, it's not. You heard it wrong. And I love the narcissism of them both. It's yeah. very important to me. Now, where I really did get off with Mary, though, because at first it was funny, and then she went on, like, this rant in her confessionals about how the grandma or the aunt was, like, so unhealthy and eat drink water and don't lose your limbs. I'm right. like, oh, did you mean it to insult her? Yes. That's what it sounds like. So it sounds like maybe Jen was picking up on that, and she didn't want to say that because she didn't want to bring that to light on the show because it's about her aunt. But Mary was like, I don't understand, like, why she's mad at me when she should be mad at her aunt for not drinking enough water. Right? Yes, right. Yes. So, so for me, in all respects, regard, regardless of the fact that Mary has all the stories and we want to see what all that is about, I, I, I got very uncomfortable with Mary. Mm. Like, um, everything about Mary seems so shifty that I feel like we are co-signing and watching something or somebody who is very problematic in real life, who's probably abusive or has done a lot of fraud. And then if we just give her this platform, we are co-signing with it. That's the feeling I got out of mm -hmm. that. So she's the one that I didn't quite, I didn't quite enjoy in that sense, but as a reality star that you want to see, you know, it's a, it's a, it was a train wreck. She was a train wreck. And in so that I think, sense, it, yeah, sure. I think it's important to also see the way the producers present her to us, right? Because there is something to say about like, oh, when somebody like Thomas Ravenel is on TV and we're yuck yucking it up with him and Chef going on a, you know, going yeah. out to a bar, it does feel like we're co-signing this problematic mm -hmm. behavior. But I think with her, what I think is going to be interesting is seeing the way that she's presented. Because I don't believe that the Bravo producers are going to present her in a way that is going to be positive yeah. like even the fact that they put that thing in the confessional of her talking that shit like they would not have put that in there if they didn't already want us to know that she's she's not She's not an okay person. Like yeah, and she's on the outs. I mean, Whitney had to like slide it by her, and I'm like, oh shit, I shouldn't have told you that. So we already yeah. know she's on the outs. I think they're doing that on purpose, just in case people don't like her. Where like we already casted her, but like we know that she's not the one to watch for. Yeah. Okay, so now I feel I feel bad for her. Why are they doing the a black woman? Uh, you know, nasty. Why even Why even sign her up and then bring her on and make? Um, her I believe it's because she's. I believe she's racist. I believe she's racist, like to her own, yeah. like to her. There's a, oh, wow. a okay. self-loathing there. I think that that's what happens is like there's a couple of times in the trailer, I've been able to deduce that between Jen and Mary, Jen gets very uncomfortable because of things Mary says about her husband. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she's like, how can you be this way? Like, I don't know how I'm defending racism against a black woman as a non-black woman. Like, they, you know, mm -hmm. it, I think she's like very confused as to how this is happening. And I think they want us to be on the side of Jen and Wright so that Bravo doesn't get in trouble. And they're giving her the Monique treatment before she's even done anything wrong. Like she's already not invited at first and is an oversight to a party in the first 25 minutes of a show and yeah, we don't even like know the, why yeah i think and, and knowing that this is all being shot after months of already shooting so there's obviously something that has happened with mary that bravo feels that there it's time to take that route with her already on the first episode so yes yeah oftentimes i mean i know that in our community this happens in like the south asian community where you do have people that are like self-loathing in that way to their own people, right? And you can sometimes tell by the way they dress or the way they talk or the way they look at other people that even though they're part of their community, right? And I think that with somebody like Mary, who has a chock full of problematic things happening around her, belongs to a church that we're now finding out on Instagram. There's a great Instagram account. I can't remember what it's called, but there it's, it's called like Mary Crosby, like number one fan or something, but it's like not, it's like completely putting all her business in the street, but on it, they're talking a lot about how like, it's a very anti-gay church. It's very problematic. There's a lot of other issues around. Oh, yeah, it's Pentecostal. It's, it's, it's quintessential Pentecostal. And right. Um, it's not oh, just one church. Right, who are, are very aware of what Pentecostal is. It's um, like we call it like holiness. It's very, 
gender specific, gender role specific. Oh. It's um, very, that's why all of her outfits are probably going to be floor length or pants. I mean, they really don't, they're really not supposed to wear pants. So as women, so um, I doubt we'll get a whole lot of those, but the, the stockings, wow. absolutely. We're going to get more stockings. Um, they're not really supposed to show a lot of leg. It's supposed to be like skirts down to the floor. They don't show shoulders. That's why in her uh, promo, there, she's not showing shoulders. They're supposed to keep a lot of them covered up um, as women, um, married or not. And so it's a very, it's crazy that she's even a woman pastor of a Pentecostal church. That doesn't usually happen, but there are plenty of women ministers in the uh the Pentecostal community, very similar to the Church of God in Christ, which is like called Kojic. It's it's very it's funny because it's not Mormon, but it's it's pretty adjacent, just like another version, right. heavily black. Wow. Yeah, right. Yeah. We have a lot of Pentecostals in India as well. So I grew up with a couple of people in my neighborhood that were Pentecostal and they were super strict with their daughters. And it was very much the dad ruled everything that they wore, yes, what they said, yes. everything. They are the he head said, of the house. Yeah, the head of the house and in everything from, you know, they would not celebrate birthdays and they would not celebrate, even Christmas is very subdued. It's not like a, they don't do the kind of Yes, yeah, very, very, that, very modest. Very modest. They had to live very modestly. And that was, and, and they did donate a lot to tr their church. Um, yeah, so yeah. That was, I can see that, but she walking around wearing designer clothes and showing off all of that wealth is- She's only allowed to because of, she is the minister. That's the only reason. Right, but mm -hmm. even as a minister to show off the wealth and wear designer clothes outside is sort of, I have, at least in, in the Indian Pentecostal communities, I haven't heard of that. But, yeah. Um, that, may be, that may be true here, but not really elsewhere. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's super strict about yeah. how modest they are. Wow. So yeah. the, the, and the other thing I want to point out, which is just like an observation I made, is the way that she talks gives me like, she's got like that whisper energy that Camille Grammer has, but then she like mm -hmm. pops off also in her confessionals the way Camille does. You know, Camille all of a sudden gets a voice. She also seems like she's out of place. Like she seems out of place in this cast to me so far. It just seems like, I'm not sure, like, it. I don't know. I don't know if that's just, like, me wanting to see more, like, fabulousness on TV. But it does, I, I understand, Arthi, your point about, like, getting a little bit uncomfortable watching her. Because, mm -hmm. because yeah, it, it was, it's sort of the darkness, right? But also, I love that about Housewives when that happens. I love that about Beverly Hills, that it seems so fabulous. And then there's, like, this sort of dark darkness that that lives in amongst these rich people in like Hollywood right so I love that I'm very excited about it um is there anything else Monty that you want to tell us about what you learned from the zoom call I think it's so fascinating that you got to be on it um it's, it's that there's definitely some Jen is like the this epicenter of the cast it seems um she has the most uh connections with the most amount of people on there I do sense some uh, frowned upon behavior from like Meredith on to like Jen and Heather. I think Heather like you know disappoints the the Mormon girls or something like that because she was married to such a prominent family and all that stuff. So I think we'll be it'll be interesting to see that play out. But um, they were super super fun and the you know Lisa and Meredith seemed to be the most reserved. But I think that was because uh, Jen and Heather were turning up and they were like. <laughs> not really into that and so um one thing i did uh, notice is that meredith said that um her they asked somebody asked her whether uh, what she's if she regrets anything coming out on the show and she said no she's excited for people to learn about her family her son is obviously the light of her life he's amazing we all loved him and then she said that you know she just wishes they were in their permanent home because they were in a home that wasn't permanent at the time. So I think that means that they were renting at least for the first part of the season. Oh, uh, hmm. Yeah, because they're also saying that they're like part-timers in Salt Lake City. So I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. as well. Well, um, 
I believe that we're, I think you have to go and record your other episode now, right? For, for yeah, today. I'm going to like eat in the middle and then I'm going yeah, like, yeah. to do it again at eight and yeah. have to record Bachelorette. I have to go and see stuff. if my husband was feeding my kids raw pasta. So I don't know <laughs> no. what's going on down <laughs> Thank you so much, Manny, for coming on our Winking Thank you podcast. for having me. We It was so much fun getting yeah. to know you uh and you know Noura is the one who turned me on to your podcast and now I listen to it regularly oh love, thank love, you so love. much I really appreciate it love, honestly um, yeah we're just really excited that there's more perspectives on these shows from the viewers yes. that are there because there's a lot of viewers that have been sitting around with opinions on things that happen on reality tv who feel you know it's not just about watching a bunch of white women on tv it's a lot more than that it's the social impact of the things that we watch on reality tv are so deeply interesting to me and i love hearing the perspective of people of color um specifically on those things so i really appreciate you you i love your podcast i appreciate you coming on thank you so much can you you tell everybody where they can find you yeah, right after you listen to this one, you can check me out by uh, listening and searching um, by Mixing with Moni in anywhere you podcast. And you can find me on all the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, by searching at Mixing with Moni, M-I-X-I-N-G-W-I-T-H-M-A-N-I. Thank you so, so, so much. We love it. Um, thank you for doing this. We're a little, little fish right now. And I know that I just really appreciate people that are coming up and taking the time out to talk to us. That means a lot to me. Of course. Thank you for having me. So that's the episode. Thanks guys so much for listening. My audio was really weird. So we're still figuring out the kinks of that. Apologize for that. But I hope you guys loved it. We had so much fun talking to Mani. She is a breath of fresh air in the Bravo podcasting space. So definitely go and check her out. Um, as always, we are on Instagram and Twitter at the reality is pod. Please subscribe, share, like, leave us a review, send us a DM. If there's something in particular you think that we should cover that's not on Bravo, we'd be happy to do that. Um, and yeah, we'll talk to you again next week. Bye.